Hi there. It's June the 5th and we are completing our journey through the book of 2 Samuel. We've come to chapters 23 and 24. Uh, at the end of chapter 23 we have the balance of the gallery of David's heroes. In fact the 37 of them whose names are given here who are those who are warriors of, uh, of great worth to David. It's interesting to note among all these names that the very last one is that of Uriah the Hittite. And remember that Uriah the Hittite is the one who was the husband of Bathsheba. And David had Uriah killed in battle so that he could take Bathsheba to his own wife after she became pregnant by him. And so it's interesting, it's ironic that he is one of David's mighty men of valour. Then in chapter 24, there's a, a, a story which is really a standalone story right at the end of 2 Samuel of David's presumption in taking a census of the fighting men of his nation. Now it says at the beginning of the chapter that God was angry with Israel and therefore used this as a pretext to bring retribution against Israel. But whatever the circumstances, David orders a census. And Joab questions this. Joab, David's commander, says, is this wise thing to do? You know, should you be doing this? Because Joab remembers that back in Exodus, there's a command there that says whenever a census is taken, a ransom, a payment has to be made to the Lord, because after all, he is the one who owns Israel. Israel actually belongs to him, and therefore a ransom should be paid whenever a census is taken. However, David doesn't take heed to this. Joab and the military men go out and they go throughout Israel and uh, it takes about a month to count Israel and then they come back and they find that there are the number of fighting men in Israel and Judah are 1,300,000. However, the Lord is angry about this and through Gad, the prophet who he sends to David, he gives David a choice, either seven years of famine, three months of being pursued by his enemies or three days of plague. David opts for the three days of plague and therefore in a period of three days thousands and thousands of people in Israel die of, uh, of illness. And at the end of the three days David uh, wants to bring an end to it. He sees the angel actually or who's bringing the plague standing at a, a place in, in Jerusalem called the, the threshing floor of Aravna. Aravna is a Jebusite. He's one of the original inhabitants but we presume he's become part of the people of Israel now. And uh, David, um, David wants to buy, or he wants to buy th Aramna's threshing floor so that he can build an altar to the Lord to bring the pro bring the plague to an end. Aramna responds and says, "King, uh, King David, I want you to have." The, the threshing floor for nothing and you can not only have the threshing floor but have the, my oxen for a sacrifice and have the wood to burn it on but David says something very key he says no I'm not going to offer the Lord something that costs me nothing and so David gives uh, Arabna the full price of the of the land for the threshing floor and there he builds the altar offers burnt offerings and the plague is stayed there's something very key here that we understand God, when we make offerings to God, is something that's valuable to him, something that he values. And it needs to cost us when we do that. After all, when God sent Jesus, he gave everything he had for us. This was the supreme sacrifice and cost him everything. And in fact, Paul, at the beginning of Romans chapter 12, says very famously that we should present our bodies as living sacrifices, which is our reasonable response. It's our reasonable response worship. So let's be giving God offerings, sacrifices that cost us. Have a very good June the 5th.